when I was uh, six years old. Rice Krispies ran a promotion where they offered plastic dinosaurs inside the cereal box. And uh, for me, this was my first introduction to dinosaurs. I had no idea about them before that. The coveted animal, of course, was a Tyrannosaurus rex. And so I spent much of the year that year uh, digging through boxes of cereal looking for a Tyrannosaurus rex. <laughs> And as it turned out, I didn't find my T-Rex in the cereal box. But curiously, here in Alberta, I've had many chances to work on uh, tyrannosaurs. But in particular, I've correct, collected two tyrannosaurus rexes here in Alberta. So, so that's another full circle that's come on uh, my career from digging for uh, tyrannosaurus rex in uh, Rice Krispies to digging for tyrannosaurus rex in Alberta. When you work here, you realize that we have tremendous resources here. Uh, Dinosaur Provincial Park is still the world leading site for uh, diversity of dinosaurs in any single ecosystem and uh, has tremendous possibilities for telling us so much about why dinosaurs were so successful, why they spread the way they did all around the world, uh, how great the diversity was, how they were uh, interrelating with other types of animals, everything from mammals and lizards to uh, flying reptiles, for example. Um, these were all things that lived with the dinosaurs. My original work outside of Canada took me to uh, Mongolia and China. Sometimes I just can't believe that I've had the opportunities that I've had. Uh, for me, I think the big life changer was working in China for the first time in the 1980s. It was a time when Westerners were just starting to go into that part of the world. And uh, it taught me so much, not only about the science of paleontology and dinosaurs, but also about people and cultures. And um, I realized after coming back for the first time in 1986 that it, I had been in culture shock the whole time I was in China. And uh, it very much changed my approach, I think, um, as a person, but I think also to an extent as a scientist. Uh, made me feel very small in some ways in terms of what I could um, learn. And at the same time, it made me feel that it was very important that we continued the uh, trend towards making things more international and offering people opportunities in other parts of the world that they might not have had otherwise. For me, getting the Explorers Club medal was not something that was ever on the radar screen. In fact, getting the medal never even occurred to me uh, until, in fact, I was nominated and uh, uh, accepted as a winner. Um, and it's because, in fact, over the years, the Explorers Club has, has morphed and changed in a lot of ways. The main significance of the fact that uh, I would win um, this award is, is that uh, it does show that there's a very different attitude in the Explorers Club, that ex exploration is, is being treated in a much wider um, context than it used to be. Uh, people recognize that uh, exploration, in fact, does include the exploration of ideas. Basically, they formed as uh, a group of people who were working in the polar regions, the Arctic and the Antarctic, and uh, these were explorers, real explorers at that time, of course, uh, trying to reach the South Pole and the North Pole. Uh, by 1906, they realized that the, the idea was rather limited. So uh, they started to expand into uh, taking on mountaineers and uh, other people who were interested in different areas of exploration. And uh, one of the people who was heavily involved in it fairly early on was Roy Chapman Andrews. And Roy Chapman Andrews uh, became very well known to a lot of people as somebody who explored or opened up the Gobi Desert uh, back in the 1920s. When I was 11 years old, I read one of Roy Chapman Andrews' books called All About Dinosaurs. And uh, I was so taken by the idea of um, spending part of your, your year uh, exploring and looking for dinosaurs in uh, remote parts of the world and the rest of the year in, in essence uh, preparing those dinosaurs and writing up about them that I decided the day I read the book was what I was going to be was a dinosaur paleontologist. Uh, over the years I've, I guess I've followed in his footsteps to a large extent but that, that really was incidental. It wasn't something that I had planned to do or anything else but here we are now um, many years later Roy Chapman Andrews won the medal in 1930 
for his exploration of Central Asia, and um, I kind of felt that it was almost a full circle thing where, where I got the medal as well. <laughs>